I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns is my darling among the maidens. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my lover among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. He has taken me to the banquet hall, and his banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Listen, my lover. Look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My lover spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. My dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places on the mountainside, show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. My lover is mine, and I am his. He browses among the lilies. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee, turn, my lover, and be like a gazelle or like a young stag on the rugged hills. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me, and as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Selah. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth, for you are the one who has done this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. You rebuke and discipline men for their sin. You consume their wealth like a moth. Each man is but a breath. Selah. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weeping, for I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me, that I may rejoice again before I depart and am no more. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you pay the price with your blood and body for us to be healed. Please make our bodies come into alignment with the perfect healing you paid for us to have. Thank you, Father. Thank you that these things are done for us by the blood of Jesus. We receive your healing right now, and we give you all praise. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good afternoon, Poem. Let's get a rise and then let's lift them up together. Oh, shit. 
sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes the new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus
Voices only. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One last time. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Heavenly Father, you created the heaven and the earth. You take care of all things according to your will. We were dead because of our sins, but you loved us so much and gave your son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago to be our Savior and Lord. We thank you for giving us the hope of eternal life. Thank you for having us together and worship you today. You are holy, we praise and honor you. We thank you for grace and protection from you last week. We will continue to look for your protection. Father God, please forgive your sins for last week. There were times we didn't live according to your words, but tempted, thank you. For those who lost the fellowship with you, let them meet with you and fill with the Holy Spirit today. Please help our faith stronger and firm by working with you. For those who are not reading Bible daily, let them do quiet time every day to meet with you. It is hard to understand your way and plan in our lives sometimes. But let us know that this is a hidden blessing from you to train us and we will praise you eventually. Please let us love you more and help us to love our neighbors. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good actions and praise your Father in heaven. We plan to help a Dumpo outreach on 23rd July for the children and people from Central Asia. Father God, please guide us that everything planned will go well 
and gospel will be spread more in the Central Asian community at Dumpo. We will, they will glorify you. We pray that you will use poem Pyeongtaek and Ansong community. Thank you for sending newcomers to this service. Please help them to settle, get to know each other, enjoy the fellowship in Jesus, and grow spiritually. One, through the uh, one-to-one discipleship training. Father, we pray that stop the Ukraine war and bring the peace back. We have brothers and sisters who are sick. We pray for your healing touch. We pray for our children. Please help us to raise them well at home and church. They will be your disciples and a faithful servants in the future. Lord, we give all praise to you. Please give your blessings and healing and provide the joy to those who are serving you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to Poem, Pyeongtaek o n d e r English Ministry. Uh, yeah, welcome home. I'm glad. and blessed to be able to worship our Father together uh, as family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And for all those that are joining us uh, live, we pray that the Spirit be with you and that you be blessed as you are worshiping with us. Uh, At this time, can we turn to our neighbors, our left and our right, and just greet them, uh, say hello, give them a nice high five, and just welcome everyone to the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see you guys. And then can we turn to each other one more time and let us encourage one another by saying, let us be the salt and the light. Let us be the salt and the light. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, If there are any uh, first time attendees or uh, newcomers to POEM, if you could just uh, raise your hands really quickly. We just want to welcome you and uh, acknowledge you. So if if this is your first time ever in our English worship, uh, just kindly raise your hands okay nice all right even though you don't raise your hands we know who you are <laughs> but yeah welcome welcome we we want to welcome you guys uh please uh make yourselves at home uh this week our refrigerating post or memory verse for uh p y o n g t e k o n r i church comes from second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says therefore if anyone is in christ They are a new creation. The new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Amen. Uh, I hope and pray that you guys could take these uh, printouts home and uh, put it on your refrigerator to continue to remind yourself and bless yourself uh, with the word of God, uh, reminding each and every single day that you are a new creation in Christ, that old has passed and that new is here because Christ is living within you. All right, uh, before we get into the word, I would like us to go to God in prayer. Uh, can we pray for Korea and uh, neighboring countries at this time? I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, our neighboring country of Japan just lost its uh, former uh, prime minister. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a shocking news that's kind of shaking the nation, and as, well, as well as the ongoing war that's happening in Ukraine. There's so many things uh, that are continuing to uh, just try... to do their best to take away that hope, right? And, and, and reminding us that we are living in a very broken world. But uh, let us go to God because God is good. And we know that God will continue to be sovereign and he will be taking care of each and every one of us. So let us commit our brothers and sisters in our neighboring countries and remember all those that are uh, in need of Christ. And I think the best gift that we could give them is prayer. So let us go to God and commit our neighbors to the Lord together. Let's pray.
Father God, we just want to thank you for being uh, the creator and the sustainer of the universe, as well as being our refuge and our strength. We want to commit ourselves, the land of Korea and the world, into your hands. We pray for comfort to be brought upon Japan and in Ukraine as they are experiencing war and political turmoil. And we pray for your hands of grace to be with all the refugees around the world, for them to find provisions and peace uh, through the church and through you, Lord, uh, where the only the right kind of peace could be found. We pray also for the church and the missionaries who are doing their best to spread the gospel in uh, unreached regions of China and North Korea, as well as many other different nations. Father, we pray that many lives will be changed and that there will be many opportunities for them to find new life in you. Lord, in a world that is where it's becoming more and more filled with darkness, we pray that your life, your light will prevail and that you will shine your light through the church so that all would know Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. Would you transform us through your word today and touch our hearts. May we be filled with your spirit. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, we had a recent holiday uh, this past week. Can anybody tell me what holiday we had? Fireworks, 4th of July, there we go, yes. So it was 4th of July or Independence Day for America this Monday, this past Monday, and uh, many people got to celebrate the holidays and enjoy it as well as to celebrate the freedom, right, the freedom that we received. And even if you didn't have a day off, I hope and pray that uh, you are still able to take a moment to get a little rest, but more so to reflect on freedom, and just to be thankful of uh, the many people who has uh, fought to secure that freedom for us. And in light of 4th of July, as I was talking to uh, one of the other pastors, uh, he reminded me of something that I had forgotten. Are you guys curious what that is? <laughs> yeah, so uh, 4th of July, or uh, Independence Day, is not actually celebrating receiving the freedom, but it's actually the day we celebrate the Declaration of Freedom, right? It is the beginning point, and, and it is when they sign the document for Declaration of Independence. And it got me thinking that it is very applicable to our own spiritual lives because freedom begins when we declare our faith in Jesus Christ, right? It is He who works to secure us that freedom and to complete it on our behalf. And though we may be here on earth, right, struggling and fighting to preserve and to persevere in our faith, it has already been finished in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So when we declare our faith in Jesus Christ, it is already done because Christ has paid it all. And I would like us to think about that, that journey of total freedom as we are uh, reminded in our verse, uh, in our message entitled, uh, Be Strong and Courageous, as we will see God encouraging Joshua and the Israelites that he will be with them and that he will fight for them and he will deliver them to the promised land, right? That he has promised to his forefathers. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. If you're ready, please say word. If not, please say wait. Word? Word, all right. Let's get into the word together. I will read a verse, and then you guys will read a verse, and then uh, we will read responsibly, and then we'll read the last verse together. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving you to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that your sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. 
Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For when you will take your way to prosperous, and then you will have good success. And altogether have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. So last week uh, we looked over uh, Deuteronomy where Moses is at the end of his life and he's sort of passing the torch to the next generation for uh, the generation has come to an end and they, only the new generation, those, had, those that uh, were not out of Egypt that were born in the wilderness uh, get to inherit the land, unfortunately. But uh, Moses instructed them uh, to remind them, the new generation, to remember the Lord and his promises and to daily remind themselves of the word of God by having the words written on their hearts and by reminding your, the children and the next generations of the commands of God because when they enter into the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, they will have a lot of temptations to be complacent and they will try to come in the way of them wholly devoted, wholly devoting themselves and committing themselves to God. So Moses uh, tells them to not only proclaim the faith through the Shema, which is one of the kind of prayers that they had to uh, say, but also by possessing the faith, not only professing, but possessing the faith as um, they will be continuing to be reminded that God is with them. So this week we are continuing on the story of Israelites as some time has passed and, and Moses has passed away and now Joshua is raised as a new leader and they're about to embark on the journey to enter into the promised land, right? And we get the context of the passage right in verse 1, as it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. So if we rewind a little bit and go back to Deuteronomy, actually, uh, Moses is able to see the promised land, right? God shows Moses the promised land and is actually uh, an act of grace, because he gets to see the land and God is reminding Moses that don't worry, Israelites, the people of Israel will in fact enter that land. And this kind of coincides with uh, what, what God says in Deuteronomy chapter 34. It says, the Lord said to Moses, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, and I will give it to your offering, uh, offspring. And I have let you see it with your eyes but you shall not go over there. So although God is telling Moses, you're not going to be going there, it ends with sort of a, a good note because he is saying, don't worry, your future generation, the new generation that you have instructed, they will in fact enter. And this kind of uh, rings true because uh, this ties in with what Jesus said in his conversation with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 3. Uh, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, until uh, one, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, though Moses was not able to see it, we see that just like what Jesus says. I mean, although Moses was able to see it and not enter, just like what Jesus says, right? Unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. And I think it was symbolic that Moses was able to see the land right? because uh, it shows that he had favor from God still, right? He still had a relationship with God. So just like that, I hope that this can encourage us not only to be able to see and enter the land, but also to be a channel of blessing where we can help others to join us to enter the land, right? Not only for us to possess it, but also to share the faith. 
Anyways, going back to the book of Joshua, it picks up right after Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 34, and it, it points out that after the death of Moses, and it was actually about a month after the death of Moses, as uh, in verse 8 of De- Deuteronomy chapter 34 says, And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plain of Moab for 30 days. Then days of weeping and mourning of Moses were ended. So after giving time to the people to have proper respect, pay proper respects, and to mourn uh, of their former leader, now the time has come where God is commissioning the new leader, Joshua. And this actually is no surprise to the people of Israel because Joshua has in fact been Moses' assistant for a very long time and he was hailed as one of the military leaders or heroes that brought the first victory, military victory uh, uh, for Israel as they defeated the Amalekites. And not only that, Joshua and Caleb are the only ones from the generation which had escaped slavery and were permitted to enter the promised land as they were the only spies to invade the land of Canaan, right? And they came back with good news saying, we should go and invade, right? We should, we should take over. God has promised us. And Moses even notices Joshua's obedience and trust and commitment to God as he would be the one to give Joshua his actual name. Did you guys know that Joshua was called Hosea or Hoshea? So number chapter first, uh, chapter 13, verse 16, it says, These were the names of men who were Moses, whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hosea, the son of Nun, Joshua. So Hosea in Hebrew, it means salvation, which uh, was Joshua's original name. But Moses recognizes Israel's future leader as Yehoshua or Joshua, meaning Yahweh. Is salvation. And we can see that Joshua would reflect Christ, Jesus Christ, as Moses did, as he was a sort of a Christ like figure, being a mediator for Israel. Joshua is also, as a matter of fact, in Greek, his name is rendered as Jesus, which is Jesus, right? Same name as our, the name of our blessed Savior himself. And not only that, it is Joshua who would bring the children of Israel into the promised land where they would experience the rest, the rest that is opposite of what they were experiencing in the land of Egypt, right? the slavery and the hardships they experienced during the wilderness. When they enter the promised land, which is sort of a symbolic place for heaven, they will be able to enjoy the rest that God has already provided. And it is Jesus Christ who brings us into the presence of God, into his eternal rest, right? and who prepares our houses, your house, my house, our mansions in heaven. And also, Joshua begins his role as a leader of Israel at the banks of Jordan. And Jordan is where Jesus Christ would be baptized and would start his uh, role as the one to proclaim that the kingdom is here. His public ministry will start in Jordan as Joshua would choose 12 men out of the people of Israel to carry 12 stones over with them as they're crossing the Jordan River, Jesus Christ would also choose 12 faithful apostles or disciples whose foundational stones would be laid to build the church of Christ. And although Joshua had been called by the mouth of the Lord to be the successor in the task leading the people into Canaan uh, before, in Numbers chapter 27, uh, the word comes again. A word of affirmation of this commissioning comes again to Joshua, right? For him, for, for God is assuring Joshua that he would be the one to help him fulfill all the promises that God had made. So in Joshua verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 2 to 5, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, 
Go over this Jordan and you and all this people into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will give to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Le Lebanon, as far as the great river, the U river Euphrates, and all the land of Hittites to the great sea toward going down to the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. The commissioning and affirmation by God uh, probably was a big comfort, right? And big confidence to Joshua as he's, as he's now stepping into the leadership and having to fill in some large shoes, right, left by Moses. And I'm sure that Joshua was actually faced with that reality. Like, wow, this is really happening. I got to lead these people. Moses is no longer here, right? I mean, can't you relate a little bit? If you had to lead and step into a big role, I'm sure you will feel the same kind of pressure. And you would want some sort of affirmation or some comfort or confirmation so that you could really, like, Rest in the Lord, in a sense. So I'm sure uh, Joshua was feeling very anxious, and he was just in a state of, of, of being confident, yet his confidence might, might, might be a little wavering. And however, uh, through this promise and affirmation of God, we're able to be reminded that the memories of the past deliverance brings forth fruit, to our present confidence, right? And not only that, it brings future hope for us to rest and to trust in God because God is faithful, because God is loving, because God is our Father in heaven, right? And even Jesus, uh, as he was commissioning his disciples, said these exact same words. Can we actually read uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse, uh, 28, verses 19 and 20 together? Ready? It says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. Right? He says, He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you until the very end of age. And not only that, as we live out our faith and become the salt and the light, a channel of blessing, we get a second reminder that God, who works through the person we bless, will also remind us of the same grace. Right? As, as we see somebody change and transform and see God and the Holy Spirit working in the person that we share the gospel to, we're reminded again, wow, God is real, yes. He is indeed working. Just as he's working right now in my friend, he is working in my life. So it's the double dose of blessing when we share. We get to be reminded again of the grace. And in addition, in addition to all that, uh, John Calvin had this to say about God's reminder to Joshua. It says, Because even some of the bravest men, although fully prepared beforehand, either stand still or hesitate when the thing has to be done, this exhortation or encouragement to Joshua to gird and prepare himself at once for the expedition was by no means superfluous, meaning unnecessary or redundant. Though his call was ratified or approved, again, not only for his own sake, but in order that the people might not hesitate to follow him with their minds collected and calm when they saw that he took no step without the guidance of God. Wow, right? When we see our leader being led by God, I think it would totally give us confidence to follow with faith. So the affirmation of Joshua was not only to encourage the people or encourage Joshua to be strong and courageous, but also for the people to be strong and courageous to rest and to keep their faith in the Lord for the Lord is dwelling with them, right? He is going before them. 
And speaking of being strong and courageous, our passage ends with a threefold encouragement and reminder to Joshua to be strong and courageous. Verses 6 through 9, it reads like this. It says, Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. The reason for this confidence was not in Joshua's ability, nor was it his knowledge or his experience. The reason for the unwavering confidence and courage was the Lord himself who by his mighty strength had delivered them from the land of Egypt and who by his faithfulness had taken care of the people in the wilderness and now in his goodness will deliver on his promises and lead them to the land that he had promised. The only thing Joshua would have to do is to continue to meditate on the word of God. Continue to remind the people of the commands of the Lord to not sway from the left or the right, but to be centered in the word of God. And as they do that, they will continue to be reminded, right, that God is with them, that God is working for them. And just like we sang, even when they don't see it, God is working, right? Even when we don't feel it, God is working. And this was important because eventually, at the end of Joshua's days, if you go to Judges, what actually happens? The people, in verse 25, it says, In those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. See, the people, if they do not continue to remind themselves of the word of God, and stick close to God, eventually what happens is just this. Everyone becomes their own judge. We do whatever is right in our own eyes because there is no standard, right? A consistent standard that is telling us what is good and what is evil. Everything becomes relevant. So in other words, God tells Joshua that as long as Joshua and Israelites Abide in him and do all things trusting in him. The Lord will be with them and cause them to be successful. And success here is not in the ways that we think, right? in the ways the world measures success, but what God had planned for him. Success meaning you will receive what I have promised to you, right? So simply put, I believe God is reminding all of us through our passage that he, our Lord, is not the subject to our will, right? But rather, it's the other way around. We are the servants to our Master and Lord. We're supposed to be living according to His will, not ours. And not only that, our passage reminds us of the reality of faith and salvation, right? As we talked about in the beginning, Although we have been forgiven and are born again in Jesus Christ by placing our faith and trust in him and confessing that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we are still here on earth in the midst of battle every single day, right? But we cannot forget that Jesus Christ, the work that he's done, the life that he's lived, and the death that he has died before us on the cross has already secured the victory for us to be successful, for us to be strong and courageous, for us to continue to remain in the faith and to persevere. Because the Bible tells us, right, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 
So church, in a world where, where it's a lot like the days of Judges, where people are more and more becoming distant from God and doing their own thing and becoming their own kings in their own lives, and let us continue to be bold and shine our light so that people can experience the true goodness of God, right? As God is working in us, let us continue to reflect that goodness, the love, the joy, the grace, the peace that we receive to our neighbors and show them, right, the good works that the Lord is doing in and through our lives, that they may bring glory to God and so that they may also join us in the promised land, in heaven, right? When, as we are going there, I think God is always reminding us uh, every single day to not only be possessors of the faith, but to be ones who give and share that exact faith that we received. I hope and pray that we can remember to be bold and courageous for our Lord, who promised whose promise and whose faithfulness will always carry out in our lives. And let us continue to remember and be confident because his promise and everything that he has told us has already been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of love that we could ever receive. Amen? All right, let us pray. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Father God, thank you so much for being a God who is gracious and reminding and affirming us of the fact that you are with us. Thank you that we can be strong and courageous, even in the most difficult situations and circumstances. And Lord, even when we face new seasons and challenges, we thank you that we can stand firm in our faith, for you are faithful. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have secured our victory and our freedom, as well as the fulfillment of our promises. Please continue to help us to abide in you, to live out your word, and to share your love to those around us. Thank you, Lord. We love you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we go into our response song, today is a very special Sunday uh, where we get to actually uh, have the opportunity to live out the reality of the visible word through uh, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. And I know that we had our communion uh, last month, but there may be some people that are new. Uh, to receiving communion. So let me give a little bit of explanation of what communion is all about. So communion is a rich symbol uh, for all of us who are followers of Jesus Christ. And especially for us who have been, you know, just been reminded of God's promises as we celebrate uh, His promise and our receiving of salvation and freedom. Uh, let us as a church, remind ourselves of what Jesus Christ has done for us and is securing that freedom for us. And uh, this happens uh, to also celebrate Passover, which for our congregation, which we uh, studied Exodus not too long ago, <laughs> finished study Exodus not too long ago, but uh, what happened was uh, as the people put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, God's judgment had passed over. And uh, it continues on where Jesus Christ is the sacrificial lamb who helps us to have the wrath of God and the judgment of God pass over our lives. So, uh, yeah, church, you know, I want us to participate uh, communion uh, with that reminder, but also uh, understand that communion is only for believers, those who have firmly place their faith in the Lord. Uh, and if, you, if there's any children here who have, who have uh, not made that commitment to faith or uh, cannot understand that this, you know, Jesus Christ is their Savior, uh, I hope and pray that we as parents could 
continue to steward them into faith, but for today, I, ref I ask that you would refrain uh, from participating if you have not made the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But however, uh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 to 29, Therefore, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, therefore whoever eats the bread and drinks of the cup, the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning before the body and the blood of the Lord. So, a uh, man ought to examine himself before he eats and drinks of the body of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. But however, it says in 1 John chapter, verse, chapter 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins and he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So if you desire today, right now in this moment, uh, to place your trust in Jesus Christ and to partake in the Lord's Supper, then please ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and forgive your sins as you confess and proclaim the Lord's Apostles' Creed with us. So at this time, let us uh, confess our faith through reciting the Apostles' Creed together. Ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this, is, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. Now as the brothers pass out the elements, uh, please take a moment to prepare yourself uh, by taking these elements and, and praying to Jesus and thanking to him for the works and the sacrifice that he has done. Uh, and as well as the love that he has poured out on us. And again, if you're not yet a believer, uh, please do not partake in the communion. It's okay. Please be comfortable. Uh, and until we will wait until everybody has the elements together, and then we will uh, partake of the Lord's Supper together. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of
nothing but the blood of oh, precious. Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain. Now let us uh, take the body broken and the blood that was shed on our behalf together. Just want to remind you guys that Jesus loves you. And Jesus forgives you. Let us pray. Father God, we are thankful for the bread and the cup. We pray that these elements will provide more than physical nourishment, Lord. Would you grant us the peace, the unity, and the spiritual nourishment this bread symbolizes. And may this cup speak again of the blood of Christ, shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, would you cleanse us and consecrate us again as we have taken this meal together as your body. We eagerly await the day that we get to dine with you in the kingdom of heaven. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done and for all that you will continue to do. We love you, Lord, and we pray all of this in Jesus' precious, mighty, and wonderful name. Amen. Now, if uh, you are able, please uh, rise and join me in the response song as well as to receive the benediction. Oh, oh, oh. 
Father God, we just want to pray and we thank you, Lord, for uh, your unfailing and unchanging love that you pour out onto us. Lord, we want to praise you for the greatest gift of grace, mercy and love in your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, may we continue to be reminded of the gospel and be filled with your Spirit so that we can live our lives with unwavering boldness and confidence with you as the source of our strength. We also pray that we may respond to the grace in our lives by sharing all that we receive with our neighbors and by offering you ourselves, our gifts, our talents, our time and possessions for the building of your body, your church here on earth. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father in heaven, and the ever-present fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with poem and our families as well as to everyone who remains strong and courageous in our Lord, our God. May his protection, provision, and peace be with the church, the missionaries, and all those living as faithful servants and witnesses of Jesus Christ, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's give glory to God. Thank you once again for joining us uh, for our Sunday worship. Uh, before you guys go, I just want to give a couple of quick announcements. Number one, we will be having our Dumpo uh, outreach for our church on July 23rd. So if you are able to join us, uh, there's a sign up in the back. I believe it's not too late to sign up. So if you have the heart to give your talents and your giftings uh, and to serve uh, the children of Central Asia as well as our neighbors, please sign up in the back. Uh, and we will have our fellowship at the fourth floor uh, choir room. So if you are able to join us for a little bit of fellowship time and to get us get to know the church family a little bit better, please join us. Yeah, other than that, please refer to your bulletins uh, for more announcements and have a blessed week. Let us continue to be strong and courageous in the confidence and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ this week. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week and I'll see you guys next week. G-Man. Oh yes. If you have your communion cups, please, uh, there's uh, baskets to your left and your right. All right. Thank you guys. God bless you.